Hi, I'm Kevin Millington. I'm happy to be here at the Empire State Aerosciences Museum in Glenville, New York, to kick off our Legends of the Skies program, where I'll be profiling some of the great planes at our air park. I want to start off with probably the most high-performance, spectacular fighter, the T-Rex of Navy fighters, the Grumman F-14 Tomcat. Now, the Tomcat is a, a twin-engine, two-seat fighter uh, built by Grumman, which had a long history of making uh, fighters specifically for the U.S. Navy on aircraft carriers. Uh, design of the Tomcat was initiated during the 1960s as a result of a Navy requirement for a, an interceptor fighter capable of protecting the fleet not only from long-range cruise missiles launched by bombers, Russian bombers, but also as an air supremacy fighter capable of um, fighting other, other planes and protecting the fleet. Um, first flew in 1969 and entered service with the U.S. Navy in 1974. At the height of its operational use during the, the 80s, 90s, um, every aircraft carrier of the 75 plane wing, air wing, had two fighter squadrons equipped with the Tomcat for, for uh, air defense. But this is a spectacular fighter. It is the largest American fighter ever built. Um, and it's, it's truly a weapon system. Different components that combine to make it such, a, such an effective fighter. The first component is the AWG-9 radar, as you know, developed for the F-14. The AUG-9, very unique radar, it could simultaneously scan and track targets well over 200 miles away from the plane. Um, it could, in fact, track 24 targets at once, identify the six uh, biggest threats, and dispatch air-to-air -air missiles against them. We've got a very large, powerful radar. The second component of the uh, of the weapon system are the are the uh, weaponry itself. The Tomcat has four weapon envelopes, and typically carried what was known as a two-two-two mix of air-to-air -air missiles plus the gun. Um, the first envelope was uh, used the long-range AIM-54 Phoenix. The Phoenix is the weapon most commonly associated with the Tomcat. It was developed for the Tomcat. Tomcat was the only plane that ever carried it. It had incomparable range. The Phoenix could be um, could hit targets up to 120 miles out. Um, it was 13 feet long, 1,000 pounds, about a half a million dollars a shot, and it again had that incomparable range. It was carried here under the um, underbelly missile bays, and the, the missile would be ejected down from it. The rocket motor would fire it. It would accelerate to five times the speed of sound to 80,000 feet, and then home in on its target. The other unique feature of the Tomcat, or of the Phoenix, um, was that it was the first known as fire and forget missile. It did not require the parent plane to continually illuminate the target with its own radar. It could fire the, uh, fire the missile, turn away, and go after another target. So incomparable, Phoenix. Um, you typically use from 30 to 120 miles out. The second envelope, you move over here to the underwing pylon. This is a missile pylon. There's an identical one on, on the right side of the plane. The second type of air to air missile was carried right here on the bottom station. And that was the medium range AIM 7 Sparrow, a radar guarded missile. And the Sparrow was typically used for targets uh, 10 to 30 miles out, again, a beyond visual range intercept. On the shoulder station, carried the uh, A-9 Sidewinder infrared homing or heat-seeking missile. Short range, 
um, typically used for inter visual intercepts one to ten miles out. I, I recall a former F-14 pilot was visiting here and was actually doing some work on the plane, restoring it, and he, he was mentioning that when he fired the sidewinder, he came off so quick that by the time the missile was fired, by the time it got to the nose of the, past the nose of the plane, it was already supersonic. And then the final uh, envelope, weapon envelope, right here, an internally mounted cannon. This is the uh, world famous General Electric M61A1 Vulcan. It's a six barrel rotary barrel cannon. Uh, fires um, in high explosive 20 millimeter rounds at an incredible rate of 6,000 rounds a minute or 100 rounds a second. It has about a mile to a mile and a half range. Um, the Tomcat would typically carry 600 rounds. We only, probably only fired for a half second or one second burst. So you, you probably had about six to 12 uh, trigger squeezes with, with the gun. So again, the envelopes for, for intercepts of long range, 30 to 120 miles, use the Phoenix. For medium range, the AM-7 Sparrow for 10 to 30 miles. For short range, the AIM-9 Sidewinder for short range. And for a real knife range flight, the, uh, the Vulcan Cannon. The, the next component of, of the system, and the most important, is the crew. And the, and the Tomcat uh, carried a crew of two. The pilot sat in the front. And the radar intercept officer to the rear. And the Rio controlled the radar, the AUG-9 radar, as well as an extensive suite of other avionics and, and countermeasures. And the last part of the system, this weapon system, is the plane itself. And besides the you know, size of the plane, it had a maximum takeoff weight of 75,000 pounds, the largest American fighter ever built. But some key aspects of it are, um, are the wings. Um, for optimal low speed and high speed um, performance, Grumman selected the, uh, a variable sweep wing. So for low speed, where you need more aerodynamic lift, the wing is out, out in the full sweat position here to 22 degrees. Again, giving the plane more extra lift and better low speed performance. For high speed supersonic performance, where, where less drag is required, the wing can be swept back to 68 degrees, forming uh, a continuous delta, really, with the tailplane. The other uh, innovative parts of the wing, it doesn't have ailerons. Low speed roll is controlled by wing spoilers on the surfaces on the top of the wing, and high speed roll by the uh, horizontal stabilizer, known as an elevon, which controls both pitch of the plane and high speed roll. Let, let, let's uh, continue our journey here and go back to the uh, rear of the plane. The first thing you may notice is the enormous jet engine we lost here. The Tomcat was powered by the Pratt Whitney TF. 30 uh, afterburning turbo fan, and later the definitive uh, power plant was the General Electric F110. The, each engine could produce an enormous amount of thrust 29,000 pounds of thrust each in afterburner, or, or fuel is dumped right into the exhaust, and you see the big flames coming out of the plane. The, the engines could propel the Tomcat to a maximum speed of uh, over twice the sound, Mach 2.3 which at altitude is about 1,500 miles per hour. The other, the other feature you can see back here are these large twin tails, the vertical stabilizer. This provide um, exceptional stability at high speed, and with the two rudders, can really kick the plane around good in a turn. And then the, some of the other features here is, is the surface, the fuselage here. Unlike other planes with a tubular circular fuselage, the F-14 has known as a blended wing. Um, 
where, where the fuselage actually forms a lifting body, the result of which is not only the Tomcat extremely fast, but very, very maneuverable, and was considered an excellent dogfighter. And the last part here, this is the famous uh, arresting hook, or tail hook, which the plane lands on. When the Tomcat landed, um, there were four, uh, four wires going across the landing deck, the angled deck of the carrier, and this hook would come down and snag one of them. So you go from about 150 miles an hour to zero in about two seconds. So I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this uh, presentation of one of our legends of the skies here, the F-14. Um, but you should come out, if you, have, if you have a chance, you can see this bad boy in person here at the Empire State Aeroscience Museum, the best air museum around. It's located at, uh, located at Schenectady Airport off of Route 50 in Glenville, New York. Um, thanks again for joining me. And also, special thanks to my friend and colleague, Lynn Chevalier, our, our videographer. Thank you, Lynn.